This is the first demo day that SoftTech's ever done. So that's an exciting time, right? And um, we started this, this has been a uh, one of those 10 year overnight successes, right? Um, that you guys are gonna hear about. But um, we spun this out of something that's been happening really without any, um, without any, uh, we didn't have a lot of, uh, we, we, what we were doing was we were doing this all independently, right? So we had, I was doing it, Chris was doing it, Brett was doing it, and we got together and we put a program behind it. And we decided to do that back in the middle of the summer and today is where we are. So the last 90 days, we've had five great startups come into Texas, four of them are not from Texas. So we have two from California, two from the Northeast. Uh, they span a, uh, a lot of diversity. So we have three women founded companies. And I'm more excited to, to be here and show everyone the success and what we've been able to do over the last 90 days. So the first person I'm going to bring up, we're going to keep our part very short at SoftTech, is Brett, who's um, a GP in our fund. He's going to talk a little bit about how Boston's moving to Texas. Thanks, Billy. So uh, long story short, I'm a deep technologist. I've been working in technology for many, many years. And about 20 years ago, after some exits, I started doing angel investing. And then I became a limited partner in several funds and a very active limited partner, bringing in deals and looking at deals. Then I started a venture fund. And uh, one thing that was always missing in every startup that we looked at, we didn't have enough due diligence in those particular companies. So when we were talking with Chris and Billy, and you know, having soft tech with over 400 full-time employees and building what you're going to see today, the venture studio, we get to spend three months with all of the, co the cohorts, the companies like the first five that you're going to see today. So we remove all of that risk of what are the teams like? They're all awesome. Okay, what are the technologies, risk or challenges, and how do their products fit in the market? So in our fund, when we actually invest in the companies that get through and graduate we've removed a significant amount of risk. So I'm gonna bring all of my Boston network and uh, LPs and investors and startup companies to come to Houston. Thank you. All right, that guy looks familiar. <laughs> Thanks for everyone for coming here. I know a lot of you know about SoftTech, some of you don't. So for that benefit, just a quick and short recap of who we are and what we're doing. We're actually a 25 year old company. We'll be 25 years old in February, uh, headquartered in Houston, Texas here since 1980, in the 80s actually. Um, and uh, we have offices in Munich, Germany, uh, Minsk, Belarus, Vilnius, Lithuania, and we're opening a dev center now in Monterey, Mexico. Um, as Brett said, we have 400 production employees that we uh, have been doing work for for the past 25 years. And it's not really our first rodeo here, I'm going to use a Texas term. Um, <laughs> and so uh, uh, what we've been doing over that time, we have big companies that we work for, the Verizons and Sandisks and Antels and AMDs of the world. And we have a slide in our deck that actually talks about that you've probably used a product that SoftTech has worked on. And we've done that under the hood. If you've ever used flash memory or a Compaq or HP printer or any kind of, you know, something from Epson, um, we, we've been doing the development for them. So what we're doing for the startups, uh, is that they've come to us and we're de-risking it from the standpoint that we know how to develop a product for the largest companies in the world. And we know how to bring that to market, both commercially and at a quality that can ship to millions of users. And their secret sauce has been what SoftTech has done. And we're trying to apply that and have been applying that to innovative startups that are trying to solve some of the our technology challenges in the world. And when I say it's not our first rodeo, uh, as an example, a company came to us a couple of years ago to do a smart dog collar. Uh, at that time, they were at a $25 million valuation and they went on to raise money at 100 million and they just finished around at 400 million. And so we have a dedicated team working for them of about 30 plus uh, engineers. And so that's the kind of contribution that we can make to a startup. And so pretty excited about this because when I started my entrepreneurial journey, 35 years ago, there really wasn't much in the way of a studio like this in Houston. And so what we're seeing is there's been this synergy coming together the last few years between 
uh, venture investors, angel investors, startup development organizations, uh, and, and uh, companies like Softec where we can actually uh, put together an ecosystem that can compete with uh, you know, Silicon Valley or the East Coast. And if you look at Houston, Austin, San Antonio, and Dallas, just from those cities alone, uh, there's a lot of tech in Texas. Uh, so anyway, I'll get out of the way. Uh, I'm pretty excited here to have this put together. It's been a dream of ours for a number of years. And uh, I think you can like what you see. Um, thank you. Hey everyone. My name is Amir and I am the COO of Home Outside. And I'm here today to briefly tell you how we are disrupting the $115 billion landscape industry with AI and AR. So I think we can all agree that home is typically our biggest investment. And since COVID, home has even become more important, especially if you have a yard. However, most yards, how many people here have yards? Raise your hand. Let me see, let me see. How many people here are happy with their yards? Uh, well, not, not, not as bad as I've seen. Okay. Um, so most yards look like this. And they look like this because most homeowners don't want to spend weeks or months and thousands of dollars getting a landscape design that's compelling and visualized for their property. A landscape design like this one. But what if instead of taking months and thousands of dollars. What if you could get a landscape design as easy as one, two, three? One, share your home address. Two, confirm that that's your home. Three, browse through a variety of landscape designs that are gonna thrive in your climate zone, that are gonna boost your curb appeal before your neighbors, and that are gonna increase your property value. Until you find one, that meets your budget and style. And then what if you could purchase all the products that you needed to implement that design and have it installed for under $5,000, generating $20,000 in home value increase? And what if, and I promise this is my last what if, all the landscape related companies, all the companies that sell landscape related products across industries could use this tool to boost their revenue by 20%. These are the kind of questions we've been asking at Home Outside, which is launching the world's first patent pending AI landscape design platform this spring for our existing clients, proven winners and fast growing trees that reach over 60 million unique visitors. This is a street view image as an example of a property in Wisconsin. It's one of Fast Growing Trees customers. This is a landscape design generated by our platform, thanks to SoftTech, very much, that you can purchase on their website for 4,000 bucks. So instead of customers coming to them and saying, I, you know, let me get a tree and a shrub and where do I put it and what's gonna look good around it? They are asking, they want this from us because it just tells their customers what to do, what's going to work. The company was founded by a celebrated landscape designer, Julie Moyer Maservi, who um, is widely regarded in the industry as a leader. She wrote the book Home Outside to democratize her unique landscape design principles in 2008. She then pioneered the first online remote landscape design service that's helped clients internationally over the past decade. And then she has also launched a landscape design mobile app that's been downloaded over 500,000 times and it was a top 10 lifestyle app in the iOS app store. She met this guy, David Rose, who is a technology visionary who um, has done a lot of cool stuff in IoT, AI, AR, actually had worked with SoftTech before, and that was our connection to SoftTech. What you might have heard of that he's done is the virtual try-on app for glasses for Warby Parker. that allows you to try on their glasses using your phone with AR. He came up with that idea. He built the team and launched it. 
He's our CTO. I'm a serial impact entrepreneur with three exits. I've generated over 100 million in revenue across the businesses that I started. I'm also a mentor at MIT, and that's where I met Home Outside last year. They were one of the companies I was mentoring. They could see how passionate I was about this opportunity, and so Julie asked if I would join the team, and I, I joined uh, earlier this year as the COO. Our goal is to inspire $250 billion, which is 50 million homeowners each investing $5,000 in their landscape. And that's just the US market. Today, we are proud with soft tech support to be unveiling our alpha product, which I can show you at that little table out there just to the corner, um, which will enable to, you to do most of what I just showed you. And by May, we'll have it wrapped up. So I look forward to uh, talking with you and hearing your thoughts on this opportunity. Thank you. Hear me? Is it working? There we go. All right. How's everyone doing? Um, just, I want to start with a question. Uh, who works out, has been to the gym, has touched a weight before? Raise your hand. Okay. Well, then, you know, you have, there's this guy that's in the gym. You know him. He's the serious athlete. Um, it's his last lift of the day, and he's going for that PR, but he either leaves injured or frustrated. Well, we are here to fix that problem for not just people like him, but for athletes worldwide. Hello, my name is Blaine Killen, the CEO of FitForm Technologies, Inc., and we are currently raising $1.3 million in exchange for equity. No matter the goal of an athlete, they all share a common goal, and that is to maximize performance while decreasing injury. This holds true for kids building their athletic foundations that have huge aspirations to go pro, it also holds true for people that are at the peak of their performance and want to continue winning, or for people like you and I that live an active lifestyle but want to be able to not get injured so we can pick up our kids every day. Well, what's the biggest thing um, keeping people from this goal? That is incorrect form while training, and that leads to 12 million sports injuries per year across the globe. And so, what do people use right now? Well, without technology, People use a trainer, but their time really doesn't scale well, and they're pretty expensive. People also use a mirror, but that really requires you to have the correct knowledge on how to do the lift and can end up doing more harm than good. You know, some technology has come in the market to try to address this. One of them is an, is an optic solution, but they're pretty big, bulky, and honestly, very expensive. Some wearables came on the market, but they really lack reliability and actionable feedback but I, that I think we all need. Um, and so all together, we saw a huge opportunity and we set out on a mission that if we could correct form, we could revolutionize exercise by making it fun, safe, and effective. And we wanted to make a mobile solution um, in the form of an application and a wearable that it could, could achieve everything on this slide. And so we built it. Meet FitLift, a mobile application plus real-time wearable that gives real time that gives feedback to trainers and athletes during lifting and allows both sides to drive results. During a set, athletes are able to see key metrics such as rep count, lean, and speed, which when combined together are scientifically proven to drive up to 15% better results in the gym. After a set, Trainers can do a much deeper dive, even while they're on their couch at home, about how that athlete did in the session and edit their program or update it so that they can continue driving progress while in the gym. And so what are our customers saying? Why do people continue to pay us? Well, our customers are saying that we're sticky because we allow them to track workouts in ways never before possible, which allows a new level of quality analyzation which they can then improve performance. And all together, they can measure the progress of what they're doing, make adjustments, and restart the cycle. 
We charge $150 per device, and that gets them, um, you know, just a D freemium level version of our product. You can also give us $60 per month for a platform, which includes the product, sorry, includes the hardware, really simplifies it in your mind. And we normally enter contract lengths of about 12 months. We have validated this business model through our actual revenue traction that we've had, and it really let us know the sweet spot at which to charge. So a lot of uh, these big companies out there, they're really focused on making a platform um, for us to build off of, so that they're not really going in our direction. And the companies that are going after the niche space, they simply haven't provided enough value. I mean, two check marks, come on. So we are able to provide all five, and that has given us the ability to penetrate a large market with a big opportunity that is currently underserved. So our initial traction, um, you know, based on everything we've done, we had four letters of intent, one which we recently converted to a paid trial. We also recently just signed on HBU down the road from us all, Houston Baptist University, um, really proving we got something going here. And lastly, we've been working closely with a professional cycling team called Team DSM, and, and 58 professional cyclists currently use our product for weight training really proving that we've achieved product market fit. So our market's pretty big. Uh, we, we see about a $19 billion opportunity around the globe. And that market is comprised of enthusiast athletes, college and pro teams um, that are looking to get that, you know, that edge in the weight room. We're gonna start in the United States and that's valued at a little under 2 billion, but we realistically, you know, we think we can get about 15% of that. And so all of this wouldn't have been and can't be possible without a great team. And what, what made our team come together, work really hard on this, is we were all athletes that had our dreams crushed due to injury while in the weight room or on the field that was really spawned from incorrect training. Um, and together, we have achieved key, met, key milestones, such as our successful product launch, our first professional cycling team partnership, and our first set of real revenue traction. To restate, we are currently seeking $1.3 million, and this will help accelerate our business as we can hire key executives, um, we can fill out the rest of our team so that we can better serve our customers, and overall get this thing to scale like we know it can. So who's ready to join our team and help 12 million athletes around the world not get injured and achieve their full potential? Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Uh, Orcana is bringing virtual expertise into the operating room via an augmented reality platform. My name is Arthi Desai Wagabaza, and this is my co-founder, Dr. Chris Okumu. So what a lot of people don't know is in Chris's practice as with all surgeons, if there is an implant required for that procedure, there is a medical device rep attached to that. And what we realized is with that, medical device rep, did they need to actually be physically present or could they be virtually present? And what we realized was that the, in the industry, they were all asking the same thing, including all the way up to the Medtronic. So we knew that there was a opportunity here and, um, and we also realized that telehealth had grown 38 times and leveled off since pre-pandemic. So there is an opportunity here that is growing and not going anywhere. There are 7 million annual implants every year. So it's clear that there's no, no loss of opportunity in terms of uh, in orthopedics, in spine, and uh, especially also in cardiology. So as Artie said, these medical device reps are essential parts of a surgical team. Uh, they need to be available whenever I'm doing an operation that I have to implant something into a patient. 
uh, because they're not just salespeople, they are subject matter experts. They know the devices inside out better than any surgeon uh, because they have participated in many more cases than any single surgeon. Uh, the reps, uh, however, come at a considerable cost. The SGNA costs for medical device companies are quite significant. As Artie said, we understand now that they don't necessarily have to be physically present in the operating room if we can give them a way to be there virtually. And that's what we've done. So we have built a HIPAA compliant secure system that enables these reps to be virtually present. They are able to have first person point of view perspective of a front facing camera that being, that's being worn uh, on the augment, augmented realities uh, glasses in the operating room. They also have complete situational awareness because of tablets that are mounted at strategic points in the operating room that allows them to hear and see everything that's going on in the operating room. They are able to essentially provide live surgical collaboration and communicate with audio, video, and they can push content to the augmented reality glasses in my field of vision or in anybody's field of vision wearing the glasses so that we don't ever have to look away from the operating room table. Now, why does our solution work? One, it's easy to use. We don't want anything complicated in the operating room. It's plug and play. Two, we estimate that reps are gonna be able to perform or support 20% more cases, 20% more procedures at a significantly lower cost because they can't be everywhere at once. And then finally, we are portable, which makes our kit something that's small enough for the companies to ship with their implants when they ship to hospitals or surgery centers that are springing up all over the place, or for the rep they just put in the back of their car and take it to the centers that they need to be uh, uh, available for. So a little bit about the team. Uh, my background is in technology with a focus on business and uh, product development and an emphasis on design and user experience to foster adoption. Chris is a minimally invasive spine surgeon and Orr is our co-founder and CTO, and he has extensive startup, ex startup experience. Uh, he's exiting his eighth company. But the real thing in all of this is our secret sauce, which is Chris. And Chris is probably the first person to ever use augmented reality in the operating room uh, back in what, 2013? Uh, he discovered, it, it had just been announced, and he thought, wait, this could actually be something. And he started using augmented reality at that time. And he has had this vision. And in 2020, we realized that there was a real market need with medical device reps. And that's when we were introduced and have been taking it from there. So the model's pretty simple, right? There's a monthly subscription. It's nominal, especially if you're a medical device company, and then a per use fee of $500 a use. Um, we also know that there are a lot of other use cases. We're focusing on this one first and people come up to us and they're like, well, what about this? What about that? We're like, yeah, we know there's a lot. So we're excited about that in the future of what we're doing. And our target customer, right? So we talk about medical device companies. There's a lot of small companies, some middle sized companies. And of course we all know the big ones. And uh, our focus right now is on the small to mid size. We have a lot of existing relationships. And when I say we, you know, I've met a number of them through Chris and now through our network, we have also extensive uh, connections in hospitals and ASCs in uh, teaching institutions and also the massive uh, distribution organizations. So we do, of course, have competitors. These are our three major ones, Avail, Explorer, and Foximi. They all obviously have certain limitations, and Chris actually already talked about a lot of that in terms of easy to use, portability, cost, and uh, most importantly, where we're going with the future of tech, and that's the augmented reality component. So, you know, I can't tell you, like we started last year during the pandemic, Chris and I met in person once. We, we, we have a, like a connection through Zoom because it was April of 2020. And we were really kind of proving out our own model in a way, you know, and we've had the fortune of meeting in person here. We've uh, through this program and spending time together and uh, same with Aura, other co-founder, and we've built a product. We have an MVP. We have surgeons that are excited to use it. They're actively testing it in the OR with patients. Um, we have patients that aren't afraid to have that in the OR with them when they're having that procedure done. Uh, hospitals are interested in it. It solves some problems for them in terms of their workflow. And then, of course, the medical device companies, as I mentioned earlier, they have been looking for remote solutions even before the pandemic. This is just an accelerator for them. So 
we're really, really excited and we're just delighted to invite all of you to join us on the journey. Thank you. Is this on? Yep. Welcome, thanks. <clears throat> we're excited to be here. Having an open bar before you pitch your uh, business could go either way, right? But I'm Mike Turner. I'm the founder and CEO of Get Scouted. We're the first, uh, the first one to market with verified athletic performance data for coaches and scouts. Sports is a huge business, as we know, and as you're going to hear from the other cohorts in the sports industry. If anyone's familiar with Moneyball, it's changed baseball forever. The NFL, the NFL Combine are, are using or turning more digital every day. Uh, fantasy sports, esports are just kind of accelerating the trend. We had a problem that was uh, brought upon us when we were developing a smaller app for Little League Baseball that we invited a couple of Oakland Athletic Scouts to come check it out. And they said, hey, we like your app, but we have a huge problem in the recruiting industry, and this is any sport, is that we have no way of receiving verified athletic performance data without going and doing it ourselves. So the current systems right now use self-reporting, unreliable data, and talking with other guys outside, let's be serious. If, if I'm trying to get recruited into college and I run a four or five, I'm going to put a four, four, right? So we're not going to, it's not, uh, it, it's just unreliable. And what it ends up doing is they use their entire budget on travel to actually verify if the athlete performs at what they're advertising. The Oakland athletic scouts actually have a $400,000 a year, uh, budget to do this. And they said they waste about 75% of it is, uh, uh, for unverified data. They actually don't perform at the level they were set. What happens is coaches miss out on athletes because they're wasting too much time. And the biggest thing that we're concerned with is athletes miss out on opportunities. We already talked about how big of a business it is. Everyone knows the sports industry is huge. 80 billion in the U.S. alone. There's over 400 million athletes worldwide. And the biggest number that I like to look at is the top 55 schools spend over 55 million or I'm sorry, uh, over $100 million a year just in recruiting alone. Um, and like we said, a lot of that's unverified. So we decided to get to work and take on the challenge of solving this problem. So we broke it up into two methods. The first one is we need to make sure that we're collecting the data for the right athletes. So identity verification. And second off, we needed a hardware partner to make sure that when we collect that data, it's automatically populated into our platform and not manually manipulated or changed by the athlete. This is where we partnered with SoftTech a few years back and we started developing our own facial recognition software. Most off-the-shelf models use about a 32-point vector model. We use the 64 points, so we can, we can actually track the athlete in motion as they're going through a sports assessment. Higher angles, higher speeds. Next, we, built a, uh, we decided to uh, partner with a, um, well, we wanted to find an industry-leading hardware provider. We had a, a, a couple of verbal commits prior to COVID that, because of COVID, fell apart. Uh, Mike Weinstein, the founder of Zybex Sports, we met over a year and a half ago. We developed a great relationship. Uh, as they collected their data, they basically put up a PDF report. And what we wanted to do was take it to the next level onto a mobile application. So that synergy was perfect. Uh, over the last year, we knew that we probably wanted to be uh, combine and become one company. And since then, we've acquired Zybex Sports. What that brings to our table is uh, they're currently do the NFL, the NFL Combine, Major League Baseball. We're the provider for the U.S. Olympic team. And we're in a ton of colleges and universities uh, nationwide. So now we got this data. We know who we're collecting it for. We collect it with a, our, our personal hardware from Zybex Sports, and we populate it into our app. It's like LinkedIn for athletes. So they get to share this with coaches. We have the, uh, the current assessment results, which are verified numbers. We also, you can also put in your current season stats. You can edit and upload your game film. You have your personal information, your GPA. Uh, you can also see on your dashboard or how that work, that's working out for you. So how many searches did I pop into? How many coaches are actually following me and what schools are they from? And then the coach initiates contact like an interest letter. The current platforms are the opposite. You upload your data for whatever data it is. They give you an email list and you blast it out to the coaches. Coaches and scouts do not use this. So it's, they can't rely on it. It's unverified. Uh, we, did a mark, we did a research study of 100 coaches, and one of them said they used it one time a long time ago when they were desperate. So um, we wanted to work for the coaches and scouts to represent the athletes correctly. Now, the coaches, they get their own. It looks similar, but they're more search-based. 
So now they can execute a search for what athlete they're looking at. They can save that template of search. They can organize these players in whatever positions and order they want to. And then they initiate that contact like an interest letter. And the final piece of this is we also have a coaches network where if you're following an athlete, just through Bluetooth pairing with a GoPro device, a parent can log an athlete in as my kids up to bat next. And then that will go out to the coaches network or whoever's following that athlete. And they can watch that person hit live and they can share it with our network. So what we want to do is we want to take this from A to Z. So when a coach or a scout or a coach is going to meet an athlete or invite them to their facility, we've already done all the work for you. You know you want that athlete in your organization. And what you're doing is you're meeting the personality and make sure it's a good fit and you're making them an offer. That's the goal. Our economics, we're not going to charge coaches and scouts anything right now. There's probably a huge revenue model there, but we feel that the industry's already given them a bad taste and we want them on our side. We got to prove our product and then we'll address that later. We already collect $30 in, uh, for an athlete, uh, for a test for an athlete, either at a camp or one of our facilities. And then if you want the premium features, kind of like LinkedIn premium, we're starting out at $9.99 a month and then that will make your, uh, all your results public and, and viewable in, in coaches searches. Our current revenue model, like we talked about, we have $30 a test for 2022. We already have 125,000 athletes that we have to assess at a very conservative conversion rate of 30%. But remember, you get your results off our app. So if you're gonna go take the test, you probably want people to be able to search them, but just a convert, conserve, conservative number of 30%. And then uh, Zyvek Sports last year, pre-acquisition pre did about a million dollars in hardware sales. That gives us a 2022 baseline revenue number to start at 7.5 million. Our current pipeline, just a review, NFL, Major League Baseball, U.S. Olympic team. Dick's Sporting Goods has contacted us. They want to turn their indoor batting cage into an interactive um, retail market. And so we're going to meet with them. They have over 764 stores, and they sponsor a ton of camps in, in, uh, throughout the nation. I put D1 facilities up there. We're in over 30 D1 facilities, and a few of them are in the Houston area. And then these are just a, t a few of the colleges that use our, our, our uh, hardware. A&M, Alabama, OU, Florida. UNC, and so on and so on. So our go-to-market plan is we're going to launch into the vertical of American football. Eight million high school football players in America. Another study of three high schools, over 65% of those athletes said they would like to use football in some capacity to help them get into college. Our platform is already built to, to be able to provide this service to any sport. And our hardware is currently doing that. Um, but we want to make sure that our process and our product is, quote unquote, perfected before we launch into the next one. Our plan is to launch into soccer. There's over 200 million soccer players in the world. We're looking to raise our Series A round. We want to accelerate our product roadmap. We need to build our staffing. We have a great executive team being put together. We want to on-ramp those 125,000 athletes correctly into the new profile up our camps and training facilities to about 500, we're over 300 right now. And we wanna make sure we keep chipping away at those 55 elite schools. To take on this venture myself, my background, I was a Navy pilot, I was an aerospace engineer, I flew F-18s, I was a retired commander. Um, and when, in, after my active duty service, I was brought on to a private jet company as a partner through personal investment, we acquired that company procured government contracts successfully and had a successful exit in 2000, uh, 2017. I brought on Dave. He's another friend, F-18 pilot, retired Navy commander as well, who's been a successful startup founder as well. Mike Weinstein started Zybeck Sports. What we talked about about Zybeck and the history that he's done with the NFL, et cetera, speaks for itself. Partner with SoftTech is our leaning tech provider years ago, and we're going to continue that moving forward. And Crowdbotics is a uh, silicon base where I'm at uh, to help with our mobile application. So I just want you to leave with a few thoughts. We're first to market with verified athletic performance data. We got an on-ramp already 125,000 athletes next year. That's kind of our capacity, but we have room to grow when we scale. We want to lock up those key partnerships, especially Dick Sporting Goods. And then we're doing this with our experienced uh, operating and tech team. One last thought. For a college to make it to a bowl game, college football, it's millions or tens of millions of dollars for that university. For an organization to win a championship, it could be hundreds of millions of dollars. In order to do that, you have to win. And in order to win, you have to find the right athletes. Thanks for your time.
and I'm the last one standing between you and the open bar. So I hope you're comfortable because it's going to be a while. Mine's the longest one. No, just kidding. Um, I'm Christina, co-founder of Atlas uh, Coaching and CEO. So I'm going to start off with a really simple ask. I'm not sure if any of you played sports, but whether we have computer coders or, or whatnot in the room, I'm sure each of you had a hero growing up. Each of you were inspired by somebody. Who did you dream to become, right? Who was your hero? Me, it was Mia Hamm or Lindsey Vaughn or Bodie Miller. They were my idols. It's exactly who I wish was my coach. Billy, was yours Babe Ruth, uh, <laughs> right? So it's now possible to connect with your heroes through Atlas Coaching and learn from the masters digitally. We're gonna take Cameo and what we've seen in Masterclass and get personalized feedback through short videos. So this is Atlas Coaching. We're gonna be a marketplace that connects sports celebrities and coaches with their aspiring athletes and the youth of today, You know, the generation that we're gonna look at on the field in 20 years, right? So the, the platform is gonna be made up of, of those professional athletes, you know, your pro, semi-pro, NCAA, um, and retired athletes um, looking to connect with the aspiring ones. So how does Atlas work? Everyone think should have an, a cell phone, a smartphone with a, a great video camera. So you'll take about a one minute video of yourself or your friend playing a sport You'll go through the Atlas Marketplace, identify a coach that you, you really want to connect with that you know, you're looking up to or one that fits your price point and experience level. You'll then engage with that coach um, and send them the video, what you're working on, and they'll give you some personalized feedback. So if it's me and we get Serena Williams, she's going to say, obviously, you're terrible, Christina, but you know, she'll give me a tip and trick. So next time I hit the tennis court, I now am inspired by Serena Williams, but I also know a couple of things to work on or you know, something that helps her uh, every day at the, the US Open. So Atlas will take a 20% commission on every interaction that happens through our, our app. So the problem Atlas solves, access, you know, I can be in the middle of Iowa and still access Serena Williams. I can be in Houston and access Mia Hamm in California. Um, it gives our athletes additional avenue to earn income. So, right, we're, we're allowing them to participate in the gig economy. NCAA level athletes who are sitting, taking college classes, maybe they have 20 minutes in between, they can actually earn money. Um, also, anytime, I was a ex-ski racer, so we could only ski as long as the lifts were turning. This allows you to keep training even after the, you know, the, the lifts turn off or the pitch goes dark. You can go home and continue to improve and improve and inspire, right? I connect with Mia Hamm, I'm gonna be psyched. I'm showing all my friends that Mia Hamm just coached me and I'm gonna go back out and hit the field even harder. I know what inspired her, it's inspiring me and I'm gonna show all my friends bragging rights. Um, better coaches also, like I said, I was an ex-ski racer and a lot, had a lot of uh, parents come up to me and ask me questions because I had a bit more credibility than our parent volunteers, my co-coaches. So while we love you, dad, um, sorry, we're also going to see what the pros think. So here's our launch plan. We're going to launch with female athletes. Then we'll open up the platform to everybody and eventually go B2B and have organizations sign on. I want the Houston Dash to use this tool as fan engagement. Um, so white label it almost. So why are we launching with female athletes? Because we are female athletes. By female athletes, for female athletes. Um, and right we have a strong background in ski racing, know a lot of the US ski team members, Canadian ski team members throughout the world. Also, it's where the biggest problem is, pay to play. Watch so many of my friends, teammates struggle to you know, keep pursuing their dreams. They're raising $70,000 to go to Beijing. They have GoFundMes active right now. It's crazy. Women on the US soccer team are actually, they're running camps, they're selling t-shirts. Some of them are working in coffee shops. Um, so we're trying to solve this problem first and, and give the women, you know, of today making minimum wage another avenue to capitalize on a skill set that they already have. We spent a lifetime building this skill set. Let's digitize it. So early coaches, we already have 40 plus pros signed up. Uh, a lot of them US ski team members, but, and two of these girls will actually be in Beijing. So, uh, Laura was, should have just been in Tokyo, but injury. Um, like the other cohort said, uh, 
Sports opportunity is huge. Product moment fit, you know, it's on the minds of every single person in America to go after women's sports. So let's do it and let's connect with everybody. Um, oh, currently raising around uh, and happy to talk with anybody offline about that and what, what we're raising and what we're looking to do, but you know, bringing, bringing women's sports to the front, forefront of everyone's minds. And yeah, we wanna just connect this generation with the next uh, and you know, digitize it in a fun way. And you know, everyone has AI apps and, and whatnot, but we wanna bring it back and personalize the, the fan engagement and be able to connect this generation with the next. And now the bar might be open right after Joel speaks, but thank you all for your time. And also thank you to Soft Tech. Thanks everybody. Let's give uh, all of our startups a big round of applause. Thank you all. My name is Joel Carter. I'm the chief marketing officer for SoftTech, and uh, we're really happy to have our guests here today and uh, really a nice turnout. Uh, we've been involved in Houston Exponential and watching this uh, innovation economy grow over the last four years. And I have to tell you, we've hit an inflection point uh, here in Houston. When we can attract the caliber of startups that we just saw today from the coasts, the big tech centers, that means we're really on the right path here. You have a tailwind with over a billion dollars in venture uh, already this year, uh, lining up behind startups. The first time Houston's ever passed a billion. You've got the tailwind of, of all across Texas. These startups were pitching in Austin on Monday in front of venture investors there. Um, and there's a lot of money to de be deployed across the, the state. So uh, kudos to Houston for getting their act together over the last few years. And Houston Exponential is the public-private partnership that's making that happen. We were down at the ION yesterday. Uh, we've been to the Canon. We've been to some of these fantastic facilities that are springing up. And we wanna be part of that. Um, one of the reasons Chris really challenged us to go figure this out is uh, he wants to give back to the community. Chris is a U of H guy, electrical engineer. And he said, there's gotta be something we could do here in Houston instead of getting on an airplane to fly to our clients. So we're building more of a client base here growing it ourselves and uh, the Venture Studios One Avenue and the Venture Fund that will power that studio is the other piece of it. So thanks for coming, we appreciate it. We have the bar we, uh, out back, we have some food and we're gonna be at happy hour for the next hour. So thank you for coming. <laughs>